Now there's one more common use case that we come across in our day-to-day -day development, which is having multiple data sources. So we already have a list of posts here in this with query page. Now let's imagine somewhere on this page, I also need to display a list of users who are currently online. This piece of data is completely independent of the post data. So essentially you can fetch both of these items in parallel. And in React query, it's as easy as just using a new query side by side. So I'll add a query to get the users and for each state, I'll pass in an alias so that there's no conflict between the posts and the users. We can actually do this in a different way as well with the help of use queries hook. So this hook lets you pass in multiple queries and it fetches the data in parallel, which is exactly what's happening here. So let me show you that example as well. So I've commented out the code where we had two different use query hooks for two different data sources. And this one is using the use queries hook. And inside this queries array, we pass in both the queries, one for the posts and one for users. If I go back to the browser and then go to the list, now you'll see that there's a users query and there's also the post query. Now this was the easy part. Running independent queries in parallel is pretty straightforward. The tricky part is when one query is dependent on data coming from another query. Again, a very common use case that you might have come across. Now let's say the post that we see here, each post has comments on it. Now you cannot fetch the comments in a post without the post itself. A post ID might be required to fetch the comments specific to a post and you'll only get the ID from the post data. This is a classic example of dependent data. This again can be solved pretty easily using the enabled option provided by use query. This option tells the query when it's ready to run. I'll go inside the post component. Now, even though the comments is not really dependent on the post data, that's because we already have the ID here. So we can directly get the comments from this ID. We don't really have to be dependent on the ID that's coming from this query. So technically it's not really dependent, but just for the sake of this example, Imagine that the ID is coming from the post inside this query and we are going to use that ID to get the comments. Let me just quickly make some changes. So I have the API call for the comments here, the fetcher function, and I have the query for the comments here. So I'm setting the enabled flag that you can see over here to the logical not value of the pending state. Basically, if the post is fetched and it is not in the pending state, you can start fetching the comments. If I go inside my browser and set the network speed to fast 3G, when I load the app, you'll see the post API call in the network tab. And only after a certain amount of time, will you see the comments API call. Let me go to my browser. I'll open up the network tab. I'll slow down the network to say fast 3G. Let me clear this. Now I'll click on this post here. It will take me to the post page and it will run the first post query. After some time, it will then run the comments query because it's waiting for the data coming from the post query. So you see here that the first API call was the post data. And after that, we saw the API call for the comments data. I'll slow this down even further to make this more obvious. Let me go back. And this time I'll select the second post. If I click on this. You see that it's fetching the data for the second post. And after a while, the comments data or the comments API call got triggered. Now, if I go back and comment this out, let me go to the list again. Now you'll see that both the items are fetched together. So I'll clear this and I click on this post. You see that the API call for the post data and for the comments data happens together. So this enable flag is what kept this comments query from running unless and until we had the ID from the post query. Now, even though we are using the enable flag in this context of dependent queries, the core purpose of this flag is to disable it from automatically running based on a condition. React query does a lot of automatic refetches in the background and this option can help us to not do it under certain circumstances. Oftentimes you only would want to defer the initial fetch call 
but later on after something has happened on the application you want the refetch to work these kind of queries are called lazy queries a good example that's mentioned in the docs is when you have a filter form and you only want to fire off the first request once the user has entered a filter value so you may come across other kind of examples in your day-to-day -day practice just make sure to use this option carefully as you can easily throw away a lot of good features that react query gives you out of the box by disabling a query accidentally so yeah that was pretty much it for this video do subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one